we're going to discuss how to solve problems using system of equations. We've already looked at how to solve them. We talked about three different methods, graphing, substitution, and elimination. And now we're going to look at why we might want to do that. So essentially what you have to do is you have to figure out what x and y are going to be when you look at a problem. And then you can set up a system after that. So we'll look at this example, and I'll show you how it's going to work. So it says a museum charges different admission fees for students and adults. The admission fee for two students and three adults is $14, and the fee for three students and two adults is $12.25. Find the unit cost of each ticket. So the first thing I want you to notice is we need to, you'll notice it says here, make sure you identify your variable with a let statement. We're going to identify that first by this thing here when it says find the something, in this case, the unit cost of each ticket. That helps us identify what the variables are going to be. So we want the unit cost of each ticket. There's two different types. So we're gonna let X be one of those and Y be the other. So we're gonna let X be the cost of a student ticket and Y be the cost of an adult ticket. It really doesn't matter which one you choose as X and which one you choose as Y, but we're just gonna choose X as the student. So then what we're going to do is we're going to go back through here and we're going to look at the statement again. But instead of student, I'm going to put X and instead of adult, I'm going to put Y. OK. Because I let X be the students and Y be the adult. So now when I read it, I get the admission fee for 2X and 3Y is $14. There's my first equation. OK. And the fee for 3x and 2y is 12.25. There's my second equation. Okay? And then we're going to solve that. And you get to decide how you're going to solve it. It really doesn't matter. So you can use substitution. You can use um, anything you want. I wouldn't recommend graphing. I've written that there as well because uh, unless you're going to use a graphing calculator, graphing program, but you're not going to have access to that all the time. So let's try to solve this. I'm going to decide to solve this by substitution. That's my preferred method. So it doesn't really matter. How I'm going to use substitution. So in equation one, I am going to go 2x plus 3y is 14. So that means that 3y is 14 minus 2x, which means that y is 14 minus 2x divided by 3. Okay, but then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, therefore, in equation 2, I can replace that y. So I go 3x plus 2 times instead of y, I put 14 minus 2x all divided by 3, and that equals 1225. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, in order to get rid of that 3, I'm going to multiply everything by 3. So I'm going to go 9x plus, and then this 3 is going to go away. Okay, so I'm going to get 28 minus 4x. If I multiply those both by 2, and that's equal to, I'm going to multiply this by 3, and I'm going to get 36.75. Okay, so that says then that 5x is equal to 36.75 minus 28, if I bring the 28 over to the other side, which means that 5x is equal to 18.75, and then you're going to divide by 5, okay? Um, it's actually going to work out nicely just because it's divisible by 5. And sorry, I made a mistake here. This is not 18. This is just 8. I got a little aggressive with my number. So that should just be 875. So we're going to divide that by 5. And it's going to come out to $1.75. So that means that a student costs $1.75. So then we have to figure out what does the adult cost. So we figure out that by plugging in to what y is equal to. So I get 14 minus uh, 1.75 times 2, which is 350, divided by 3. And so 14 minus 350 
and then divided by three comes out to three dollars and fifty cents. Now you're always supposed to end this with a statement. So student tickets. Cost a dollar seventy five. And adult tickets. Cost three dollars and fifty cents. That's our statement. And we're finished that question. So then we're going to move on to another example. It says four packages of mixed nuts and six packages of dried fruit cost $68. And then six packages of mixed nuts and four packages of dried fruit cost $69.50. And we want to know how much it'll cost to buy three packages of mixed nuts and five packages of dried fruit. So what we have to do is, first of all, the first thing we have to do is let x equals something and that y equals something so when we read this question again we're, we're talking about packages of dried fruit and mixed nuts okay and we're talking about the cost so we're going to say this is going to be the cost of the dried fruit and this is going to be the cost of the mixed nuts All right and it doesn't make any difference which one you choose but i'm going to choose x to be the cost of dried fruit and y to be the cost of the mixed nuts so that means that we have 4x plus 6y or sorry other way around because the mixed nuts are y so let me just write this the other way got to read the question more carefully so 4 y plus 6 x is it says 68 dollars and then six packages of mixed nuts so 6 y and four packages packages sorry of dried fruit is equal to 69.50 right and you can again solve this any way you like um i'm gonna just do it by elimination because I did the last one by substitution. So I'm going to times this by three and I'm going to times this by two. All right, and that's going to give me twelve y plus eighteen x equal to two hundred and four and then six times two is twelve y. 4 times 2 is 8x, and 69.50 times 2 is just double, so it's just 139. So then I'm going to now, you'll notice my y values are the same, so I'm going to subtract now. So 12 my y, 12y, sorry, minus 12y, they go away. 18x minus 8x, that's 10x. And then we go 204 minus 139, and we get 65. So that means that X is 650. And then I go back and I say, therefore, Y is equal to what? All right. So we have to plug into either of the two equations. I'm going to plug into the first one. So I'm going to say 4Y plus 6 times X, which is 650, is equal to 68. So I get 4Y plus, and then 6 times 650. So that's 39. The 9 first without the 3. Let me fix that. And that's equal to 68. So that means that 4y is 68 minus 39, which is 29. And that makes y 7.25. Okay, now. This question doesn't ask me to make a statement about what the price is. It just wants me to know what one price is. And that's the uh, three packages of mixed nuts, it says, and five packages of dried fruit. So my final answer is going to take three times 725 and add five times 650. And that's going to tell me the cost that I need.
So I'm going to do that. Out and I get $54.25. So that's how much it's going to cost for that three packages of mixed nuts and the five packages of dried fruit. Okay. Uh, here's another example. It says Matthew can cycle 15 kilometers faster than he can jog. If Matthew travels 120 kilometers after jogging for two hours and cycling for four hours, how fast is he traveling while jog jogging and then while cycling? So we're going to go, we're going to let X be how fast he's going. Um, we'll say jogging speed. Because that's what it wants to know. How fast is he traveling? So we'll say the jogging speed is X and the biking speed or the cycle speed is going to be Y. So it says that Matthew can cycle 15 kilometers an hour faster than he can jog, which means X plus 15 is going to be Y because Y is faster than X. Okay, so Y is X plus 15. That's one equation. And then it says that he travels 120 kilometers after jogging for two hours. So two times X and cycling for four. And four times Y is equal to 120. All right, now I'm going to solve this one by substitution. I think you can probably see why, because I already have y is equal to something with x in it. All right, so what I'm going to do is just say, I already know then that in equation two, I can just subtract, sorry, not subtract, I can add in the x plus 15 as y. And then I can solve for x. So I get 2x plus 4x. Plus 60 is 120. That means that 6x plus 60 is 120. <clears throat> Excuse me. Which means that 6x is 60, so that x is 10. And that's in kilometers per hour. All right, so if x is 10, then y is 10 plus 15. So y is 25 kilometers an hour. And because we're solving a word problem, we're going to make a final statement. So he jogs at 10 kilometers per hour and cycles at 25 kilometers per hour. And that's my final statement. Okay, so there's more to practice there. Um, and you can get the practice from your teacher as well. They may be posting something else online or whatever, but we'll leave it at that. Those are three examples. Um, the only other thing you might be asked to do is solve a linear quadratic system. Okay. So I just want to show you what that looks like. Um, the, the way it works is very similar to the way linear linear functions work. You can use the same method. So you could graph these. But when you graph them, when you're graphing x squared in particular, it's very difficult. So you'll notice I said technically graphing is an option, but I would recommend against it. It's just because it's wildly inaccurate unless you're using technology that makes it less so. So it's better to use one of the two other methods, the substitution or elimination. And really all that happens is instead of solving just for x or for y, sometimes you're going to have an x squared or a y squared in there. So if you look at this example, I've got x minus y equals minus 2, and then I have y equals x squared. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to add these equations together. Okay, And, and what I'm going to get then is x plus y, uh, and then minus y plus y. So in other words, I'm going to get x plus nothing. There's no x here, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So I'm just going to have x Minus y plus y, they go away. And on the other side, I get minus 2 plus x squared. Okay? So then I can solve this. And the result really is that 0 is x squared minus x minus 2. And if I solve that, I have to solve that as a quadratic equation, which you would be used to doing. So you're going to factor it as x minus 2 times x plus 1. And that gives me two possible answers. Either x is 2 or x is minus 1. Now, if x is 2, then we say, when x is 2, what's y? So we go y is 2 squared, or x squared, so y is 4. So one solution is 2 and 4. 
The other solution is when x is minus 1. So if x is minus 1, we go y is minus 1 squared, which is 1. So the other possible solution is minus 1 and 1. And again, just like when you're solving linear linear systems, So here's another example, x minus y plus 1 equals 0, and then y equals x squared plus 6x plus 5. I'm going to solve this one just so you have another example of, of um, substitution. So I'm going to call this equation 2 and this equation 1. I did elimination last time, so I'll do substitution this time. So I'm going to say in equation 2, I'm just going to replace y with this. So I'm going to get x minus and then x squared plus 6x plus 5. Uh, plus 1 is equal to 0. So that's going to give me x minus x squared minus 6x minus 5 plus 1 is equal to 0. So that gives me minus x squared minus 5x minus 4 is equal to 0. And then I'm going to change all the signs. So I'm going to have x squared plus 5x plus 4 is equal to 0. I'm just multiplying by minus 1. And then I solve this. And this factors is x plus 4 times x plus 1 equals zero. So that means that either x is equal to one, sorry, equal minus one, or x is equal to minus four. And then when x is minus one, we look at what's y. So y is minus one squared plus six times minus one plus five. So I get one minus six plus five, that gives me zero. So one of my solutions is minus one and zero. The other one and do the same thing. So when x is minus 4, y is equal to minus 4 squared plus 6 times minus 4 plus 5. So that gives me 16 minus 24 plus 5. And that's 21 minus 24 or minus 3. Okay, so the other solution is minus 4 and minus 3. So what happens when you have a linear quadratic system, as you've probably noticed, is you get two answers instead of one. You have two possibilities instead of just one possibility. Then finally, we're going to look at just another example here. It says a bungalow has a rectangular interior function with a perimeter of 42 meters and the total floor area is 104. Find the dimensions of the foundation. So this is a, an application of these linear quadratic systems. The perimeter of 42 is going to be x twice and y twice, okay? Which means that 21 is going to be x plus y if you just divide everything by 2. And I'm getting that just because I'm adding up these sides. So x plus y plus x plus y, all right? So that's perimeter. The area is x times y, and x times y is equal to 104. So if I have x times y is equal to 104, I'll call that equation 1. And I have 21 is x plus y. I'll call that equation 2. And I'm going to say in equation 2, uh, 21 is equal to x plus y. So that means that y is 21 minus x. And then I say, therefore, in equation 1, I'm going to get x times 21 minus x is equal to 104. Okay, I replace y. So that gives me 21x minus x squared is equal to 104. So if I bring everything to this side, I get x squared minus 21x plus 104. Okay, and then I try to, if I can, factor that. So I need two numbers that multiply to give me 104 that are different by 21. Okay. So Those numbers are 8 and 13. So I get 0 is equal to x minus 8 on to x minus 13. Okay, so that gives me two options. Either x is 8 or x is 13. And then that means that y, which is 21 minus x, is going to be 21 minus 8, so 13. Or if x is 13, then y is going to be 21 minus 13, which means it's going to be 8. 
So essentially the rectangle then is eight by 13. The rectangle that gives us those dimensions is eight by 13 in whatever unit we have. And in this case, it's in meters. So it's eight meters by 13 meters. And that's my answer. Okay, and that, that's a linear quadratic system because I end up with quadratic. So that's how you solve a linear quadratic system. And again, you can have more practice from your teacher and you can uh, just let them know if you have questions and they will happily answer them.